ever. So I want to just talk about um, some stuff I've been doing for the last three months or so um, with a new project. I, I freelance. My name is Sebastian. Uh, and that's my GitHub because Seabass is cool. Um, <laughs> this is the project that I've been working on lately. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a local startup uh, called Migmi. Uh, they're a social network. Uh, they make some chat applications. They used to be really huge in countries like, like Nepal and stuff. Some of you here have worked there. Um, so I've been kind of building a new website, a web app for them, a front-end app, um, as well as doing some API stuff, which I will not talk about anymore. Um, it's called Surfboard. That's a sort, of, sort of a code name. Um, this is the NPM page. And I wanted to just talk about some of the stack, which I sort of divide into three different sections, uh, the infrastructure, the tooling, and sort of the app itself. Right? Um, I'm going to talk about mostly the infrastructure right now, because I was preparing sort of the content for this talk, and I realized that there's too much to talk about all these other things as well. So maybe I'll do that another, another time, or I'll put it on my blog or something. Huh? Woo. OK. Um, so I, I was writing out a bunch of content, and then I magically deleted it just as I was sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> so for, sorry for that. Um, I'm, but it's okay because it's it's mostly just showing all, showing how uh, I've been doing stuff and it's all like live stuff anyway. So I mean, the f um, I'll go through like very really quickly. Like um, I'm just hoping that this thing this this information sort of helps people um, making decisions uh, when when you're deciding to like, what to use when you're doing a a, a a modern sort of front end app. So SCM you might you know obviously choose GitHub. There's other solutions out there, but there's really only one right choice. Um, so, uh, where is it? Oh, fuck, this is hard. Okay, so my project, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that uh, I like to set up. This is like really awkward. Can I sit on this side? <laughs> I'll join you guys and girls. Okay. So, um, Okay. All right. Thanks, Michael. So one, 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 one tip that I would give, give everyone is make this pretty, uh, especially if it's open source. But even if it's not, if it's like an internal project. So I got one of the lovely designers to do a lovely design. Um, put everything in here, all these, all these badges, put that all in there, link to everything that you use. So we've got multiple CIs, we've got code coverage, all, all different kind of SaaS tools. The versioning, uh, you know, even how, how we as a team discuss this stuff. Even though this is just two people right now, I think it's really important that you document this. Um, um, okay. The reason why GitHub is awesome is because it has you know really good collaboration stuff. So you use GitHub issues pull pull requests. Um, for clients, I like to use uh, uh, basically the GitHub web app, which is really awesome. Uh, I use uh, the GitHub uh, desktop app for Windows and for Mac. Uh, and if, if it gets a little more tricky, you start going to uh, Source Tree, because I really like the UI, and uh, the command line client. Um, so, I mean, so, shit, I kind of forgot the content. I'm a little bit sorry. So, for, for, okay, so for CI, um, I'll show you a couple of different things that I've been playing with. Uh, one is called CodeShip, and the other one is uh, Travis CI. You might have seen Travis CI, because it's uh, used by a lot of open source projects. Um, good thing about it is it's free for open source. Um, it is, however, pretty slow, I find. Um, so you can see like all your builds here. Um, this, this basically uh, runs off a, a YAML file where you configure all the steps that it needs to, uh, what environment you want to run this on. So you can define like what kind of uh, node versions you want to run it on, or IOJS, uh, what kind of dependencies you need to install, uh, and then what, what you run for your tests. But by default, it just runs like NPM test, which is like pretty good practice. Um, so Travis CI, uh, really nice because it's got like this whole open source community. It supports a lot of things like extensions for deployments. But I also like to use CodeShip because um, they're, they're much, much faster in my experience. So the builds from CodeShip typically run in like uh, half the time that it takes uh, tra Travis to run. Um, but functionally, it's more or less the same. I'd say that CodeShip is a little bit easier to set up. You don't have like, have, like a YAML file, and it still runs all the same stuff. Um, it also has a little advantage if you're doing front end. It supports um, is it Chromium and Firefox. So you can run your tests if you're using something like Karma. 
or a protractor or, or something like that. You can run your tests in uh, a real browser inside um, CodeShip. Whereas in uh, Travis CI, you have to use something like Sauce Labs. Sauce Labs is uh, this uh, service where it's basically Selenium in the cloud. So it uses this thing called WebDriver JS. Uh, to do it locally, and then it connects to uh, through its own little service, like a little backend service. But it's you can all abstract it away with uh, like <coughs> Grunt or Gulp, whatever you're using. So, going back to oh, okay deployment for deployment, um, this is basically a web app that runs. That's just um, so you know I document everything here. So you can you can just use it with um, a CDN like raw Git, which basically means that it just comes from uh, my GitHub releases. So GitHub releases, another cool feature that GitHub offers. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it yet, but OK, I've only got a few here. I probably should show another project. But, but basically, like whenever I do, whenever I do it, uh, whenever I tag a, a release on master branch, um, Travis automatically picks up on that and pushes um, a couple of assets that I've defined to, um, to GitHub releases. And you can download them there as zips and whatever. And they get like archived. And you can put release notes in there, uh, which I haven't configured yet. but. It's all. Uh, it's basically, you can put any markdown in there to document like your change log or something. Um, I put my like sort of my executables there, so I don't have to keep them in my code repository. Um, it's really quite e easy to set up. Um, you, I'll have to change the secure keys, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> actually, I don't think I. No, no. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. There, it's yay! <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, 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 yeah, this is, this is basically encrypted with a, yeah, exactly. I don't know what, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, like, that's, that, that's the thing. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And just because you say that, I'll have to do that now. So you can record my secret key, and it's <laughs> Come at me, bro. But it's, it's an open source project, so you, you already have it anyway. So that's the whole point of it. You can put this, this stuff into open source uh, projects, and it's still secure. So the, 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 the nice thing about it is actually it deploys very easily to like GitHub releases. I just go like anything in my disk folder, which only exists because I've run my build. So before my deploy, I run like Browserify to generate a bunch of files and split them with the source map. Uh, and that's sort of the thing that I want to put in the, you know, the browser. But rather than hosting it myself, I just stick it into GitHub releases and then uh, serve that with a CDN. Um, so for CDNs, there's, there's really like a couple of options. What I, what I just showed was uh, raw Git, uh, which is basically, um, you know, you're, you're all familiar with. So, oops, wait, ah, panic. Here we go, here we go. So if you, if you look at like uh, any JavaScript file, right, uh, or any file in GitHub, you've got raw. So you can, the, th the problem that it has is this is a JavaScript file, but it's actually being served with a mime type of text plane. Um, I think it's like this, or there's basically you, you, you take the URL, you go to a raw git.com, you paste, and it gives you like a URL for testing. So this is like there's no uh, caching on this basically, and this one you can actually serve it in production. So it's like a nice little hack. Um, so you can serve all your files that way, and it's it's CDN around the world for free. But there's actually a really a nicer one, which is JS Deliver. Um, I haven't. Used it for very long, um, but it's it's cool because there's like this, it's it's basically built by this one guy in the Ukraine, from what I can tell, and he's got like a whole bunch of CDNs all around the world, <laughs> like sort of doing this, sponsoring this for free, and it's sort of a CDN of CDN because he's using this thing called Sedexis, which I don't know how it works, but it sort of load balances between all the CDNs, uh, and it also one of the one of the only ones who does China. So if you think Chinese people are important in China, then it's really hard to host content for them actually. So you need like a license, and you can't have your own domain otherwise. And so if you put stuff onto his CDN, he has the license, and you can serve it through that, like from within Chinese uh, servers. And it's it's like better than Akamai basically, for free. Yeah, which is really nice. So I highly recommend using that. Um, all right. So versioning, you know, like like you probably saw, uh, I just follow semantic versioning, um, which which you know. Which is basically standard for uh, uh, anything with NPM, right? So if you're using NPM, you've seen semantic versioning. You can do the little funny syntax with the tildes and all that stuff. Nobody knows what it means. Uh, but basically, you've got ma major, minor, and patch. 
you use uh, npm, there's a command called npm version, and then you type either major, minor, or, or, or patch, if I'm right, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it, it just bumps up uh, the version that you have in your package JSON, also does a tag on your, on your master branch, and then you just push that to, uh, to, 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 your, you know, to GitHub, and you know, automatically it'll go live and it'll get deployed on, uh, on, on, on GitHub releases, on, you know, through CodeChip and Travis to get tested. Uh, it goes onto your CDN. It's all like sort of one little line that you have to type. I, I do wish that I could sort of automate that a little bit more. Um, I don't like to type those commands anymore, but um, I haven't found a nice way to do that yet. If anyone has any suggestions, feel free to contribute. Um, so, yeah, uh, team collaboration. Uh, I really like using Gitter. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this. Uh, we've, we're using it for like the Singapore JS um, channel. So it's, um, it's basically like Slack, but supports full like, full, like yeah, uh, GitHub flavored markdown. Uh, so you can put code in there and it, and it actually looks like nice. Um, and it basically gives you a chat, chat channel for each like um, GitHub repository. So if you're you know if you're using this already, uh, if, if you know a lot of projects like a lot of open source projects used to use like IRC, uh, I find that this is way nicer to use. It also just runs in the browser, which I'm a big fan of. Um, and IRC is just a horrible, disgusting protocol. Um, this this is this is you know it's not entirely open source, but it's close, um, and it's you know it's free to use for everyone right now. I don't know if that changes. We can all migrate away, but uh, it's it's just a really nice tool. And uh, if you're not already in the in this group, like you should be, because this is like where pe awesome people like Tim and, and Suarez uh, answer my, my silly questions. Um, uh, this is like so I'm, we're using this for our, our our projects again. So you know, right now there's just um, two of us working on this, uh, Eddie here uh, and, and myself. So we're constantly just like posting stuff there or. Uh, um, you know, asking each other to, to accept each other's pull requests and, re and review things like that. So it's really, uh, an, uh, it's really replaced Slack for us. It's replaced, uh, you know, Skype or whatever else that we've been using in the past, HipChat. Uh, it's super convenient because it integrates with all your, you know, stuff like Travis and CodeChip here uh, all, and GitHub issues, of course. Um, yeah, it's quite cool. We try, to, we try to bring more people in the company on, so, you know, slowly and slowly. Uh, it's got a really interesting onboarding process. You invite somebody once, they get an invitation, but they sort of stay as lurkers in the room, so they kind of get notifications and it keeps pulling them back in. It's quite effective. I don't know how, did you just join? Oh, okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> hey, cool. Uh, okay. And then licensing, that's one issue that I, I like to raise is if you're building front-end apps, they're, you're shipping the code to your users, you might as well put a license on it. Um, and not pretend that it's all private and closed source because you minify it. It really makes no difference. And please ship the source maps with that along because it's just polite, you know. That's how, like, that's, that's to me, I've always been really uh, big on the philosophy of open source. So um, that, that's why I feel like it's, it's, it's sort of like a moral obligation also to make it easy for other people to understand our code. Uh, it's how I got into source, in, into code. It's the reason why I'm a, a web developer, a front end developer at least. Because it was always just you know you view the source. Uh, nowadays we've kind of make, made it a little bit tricky for performance reasons um, to actually do that anymore. So you know if you if you're publishing stuff, make it easy for yourself, but also for other people to contribute and to, to help you out. Uh, it'll in the long run also help us grow this community. So oh yeah, uh, use ISC not MIT license. It's easier. No, don't use MIT. Use uh, ISC. It's like. So it's basic, uh, ISC license is like MIT license, which, but it's a little bit simpler. It's just, it's just the tiniest little thing. Um, yeah. You can, you can, I mean, it's a really fascinating read, you know? <laughs> Not really. Uh, yeah. But it, I, I don't know if, is this the default now for node stuff or? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, for IOGS, you mean? Oh, like, ah, okay, okay, okay. Right, right. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's that's like most of the stuff for infrastructure. Uh, what am I doing on time? Hmm? Oh um, no. I mean, I, it's like not enough and too much. 
I mean, I, I've got like a bunch more stuff that I wanted to talk about, but it's, it's going to take too much time, and I, I didn't really prepare much for it yet. I was thinking of turning this into like a series of blog posts. Um, I really wanted to talk about like more ES6, Babel stuff, uh, Browserify, Webpack, uh, all these funny tools. Sorry? Okay. Uh, Webpack gave me a huge headache, so I just immediately switched away and moved to Browserify. <laughs> Um, I, d I just, I, oh, oh my god, I, I really don't like the syntax that they have with the, the query string. If you're doing require, so basically, well, nothing works without doing that, though. No, you can, you can put, you can all that stuff in the buttons in, the, in your web pack. But, so, so for, okay, so from what, I, from what I saw is that the loaders pick up on uh, which files they need to process by looking at the extensions. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of where I got, like, really... Frustrated with um, different options I have to pass to the to the to the I'm sorry to the lo to the loaders. Mm. Yeah. I, I, so to be very frank, I, I didn't spend too much time on Webpack. I spent a lot more time uh, actually initially with JSBM, which um, so JSBM. If you guys haven't seen that yet, it's um, right. It's this really neat project. Uh, I think it's got a lot of potential. It's just extremely like unstable, like very alpha pre-release. That's what it feels like right now. So. It's it, it it's it's got it's basically like npm, but it works transparently with ES6, uh, AMD, as well as the traditional common JS modules that you have on npm. Um, and you basically instead of like npm install something, you just do JSBM install something. It puts it into uh, your package JSON, but it also creates like a config.js file, which ends up being just a huge thing, where where all the sub dependencies are listed as well. So that there's there's a little bit of like ugliness, and, you, and I didn't like that too much. My main issue was that just like, um, like any other, like one of these ecosystems like Gulp or, 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 uh, or, or Grunt or something, everyone creates like plugins for the same things again. So you have like a thousand plugins. You, have, you, you, you seem to have the same thing happening here with JSPM where there's like plugins for, for every, for every uh, you know, utility under the sun. Um, and, and a lot of them are just obviously not very mature yet because it's a small community. Um, I switched to Browserify because it just makes it a little bit easier to deal with, um, you know, it's just it's a very popular thing which is, which a lot of people have been have used and polished out a lot of bugs, uh, like like uh, how do you say that? Yeah. So the way the way I, I use that, um, for example, on on Karma, um, let me see if I can just show you a quick. Okay, so, all oh right, can you do that here? So this is a project that has um, ES6 through Browserify. I'm wrapping the code in um, Istanbul, but it's using this thing called Esparta to transpile from ES6 to ES5. Um, did it open? Oh. oh, right, sorry, it's on this side. Yeah, so that's what it opened. Um, and then you can actually see what's going on uh, by clicking here. This thing is off screen or something? Oh no, it's open already. Oh right, okay, cool. So hang on. All right. So basically, it's just testing this little component here. This is a web component. Um, I'm using Stylus for CSS. It's using the shadow shadow root and all that stuff. So I'm, I'll probably prepare to talk about that at some point. I just wanted to show basically the um, the the tools that I'm using to manage the whole project and to collaborate with people. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. Hmm. Freezes like that. <laughs> 